Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz. Keys to victory. First of all, for Anthony Joshua, he needs to keep the fight in the middle of the ring. Avoid being backed up to the ropes or into the corners. Use his height and reach advantage to full effect. Spear Andy Ruiz with that jab. Move around. Avoid exchanging with him, particularly early in the fight. And it's not to say that AJ can't win those exchanges. It's just that with a height and reach advantage, if he exchanges with Ruiz, he's giving him opportunities to land that he doesn't need to give him. So avoid exchanges, use the height and reach, and also keep his hands up. In fact, this Povetkin fight is a good example of what Anthony Joshua needs to do against Ruiz and also what he doesn't need to do, what he needs to avoid doing. In the first portion of the Povetkin fight, AJ was standing right in front of Povetkin and engaging with him. And as a result, he got his nose busted and actually wobbled at the end of the first round. And Povetkin was landing numerous shots over the top of Anthony Joshua's jab and over the top of his right hand. In the second portion of this fight, AJ decided to start moving around the ring more, getting Povetkin to chase him and then walking Povetkin onto counters. That's exactly what he needs to do against Andy Ruiz. What he did in the second portion of the Povetkin fight. Not what he did in the first portion, what he did in the second portion of the fight is exactly how he needs to approach the Andy Ruiz fight. The only uh, thing I would say is that in the second portion of the Povetkin fight, AJ was dropping his left hand, which is uncharacteristic of him. He's normally a guy who likes to fight behind a high guard. In the second portion of the Povetkin fight, he was fighting with his left hand low and... Maybe he felt more relaxed fighting that way on the back foot. Maybe he felt like his vision was better. And on top of that, uh, often if you fight with your left hand low, you can catch your opponent with a jab more easily. This is something I used, I found out you know, many years ago when I was boxing, is when my left hand was low, I'd be able to walk my opponent onto the jab more easily because it comes from outside of their field of vision. So maybe that's why he had his left hand low. But against Andy Ruiz... Particularly early in the fight, I would avoid having his left hand low, yeah, uh, if I was AJ. So that's the keys to victory for him. And also, AJ should try and tie Ruiz up when he can. Don't do it excessively now, because excessive clinching is illegal. But within reason, he needs to tie Andy Ruiz up. One, because you can't keep moving around all the time. Particularly when you're the size of AJ, you're going to get tired. So... Rather than having to move around constantly, you want to tie your opponent up occasionally to give yourself a bit of respite and also to frustrate the opponent. A guy who's having to track you down and get close to you, the minute he gets close to you, bam, you've tied him up. He's frustrated. Frustration can manifest mistakes. And mistakes equals opportunities for Anthony Joshua. So he's going to be spearing, he's going to be wanting to spear Ruiz with the jab. AJ's known for a very good uppercut, but he needs to be careful with that uppercut, uppercut against Ruiz, particularly early in the fight, because Ruiz has very fast hands, and when he gets in position, he can counter. And obviously, an uppercut leaves you vulnerable around the side. So he needs to be careful. And Ruiz got short arms, he can get shots off up close against AJ. So be careful using that uppercut. I would stick to straight punches for the most part. Maybe you know, left hooks for mid and long range occasionally, but even be careful with the hooks. For the most part, particularly early, it needs to be going with the straight shots. Keep it in the center of the ring. Stay off the ropes and out of the corners. Tie him up when you, you know, when you can without doing it excessively. And that should be AJ's strategy to gradually wear Andy Ruiz down, uh, hit him with a jab. I mean, God knows what Ruiz's face will look like after a few rounds of getting cracked with Anthony Joshua's jab, wear the guy down gradually and then allow the stoppage to come naturally if it comes. Don't force the stoppage. Yeah, so in certain fights, AJ has tried to force the action and force the stoppage and he's got himself caught and he's got himself into trouble. We saw that against Dylan White. So he needs to be patient against Ruiz, be careful and be professional. And that's his best way of winning the fight in my view. Now, moving on over to Andy Ruiz. Now, I, I didn't mention the fact that AJ is significantly taller than Ruiz, but I'm guessing most of you already know that. Moving on to Ruiz, being the much shorter man. And by the way, there was a debate in my Facebook boxing group the other day about how tall or short Andy Ruiz actually is. His official height is 
six two. AJ's is six six. I- I've seen AJ in person. I've seen. I haven't seen Andy Ruiz in person, but I've seen Radio Raheem in person. Okay, and there was an interview that Radio Raheem did with Andy Ruiz just this week, and Ruiz looked shorter than Raheem. And I can tell you from you know seeing Raheem in person, standing right next to him, he's definitely no taller than six feet, maybe six one at a push. He's definitely no taller than that. So if Ruiz is shorter than him, what's Ruiz? 5'11", 5'10"? I mean, maybe it was camera perspective. Maybe Raheem was standing on a slope and Ruiz was, you know, slouching. And Ruiz is a very heavy guy. Maybe he slouches a lot because he's so heavy. Maybe when he stands up straight, he is actually uh, the height that they describe him at. And when it comes to camera perspective, I mean, there's a good example of it here. Alexander Povetkin is definitely, we all know, a lot shorter than Anthony Joshua, but in this particular frame, he looks the same height as Joshua, and in fact, his body looks bigger than AJ's body. But that's because of perspective. He is closer to the camera. It's only slightly closer. It's only a matter of, I don't know, a foot or half a foot, a matter of inches closer to the camera, but because of the way lenses work and perspective works, it makes Povetkin look as though he's as big as AJ. But when they're both stood the exact same distance from the camera next to each other, you'll see that AJ is significantly taller and bulkier at the same time. So you do have to be aware of camera perspective uh, when you're looking at that Andy Ruiz uh, interview with Radio Raheem. But anyway, getting on to Andy Ruiz's keys to victory. Ruiz is a short guy who isn't a volume puncher. So for example, Jarrell Miller, who AJ was originally supposed to fight uh, this weekend, he is a volume puncher. He's a guy who apply relentless pressure, walk forward, and he'll just hit you wherever he can hit you. He doesn't care if the shots are not landing clean. He's just going for volume. Just work rate, work rate, work rate. Ruiz is not like that. Ruiz is a guy who likes to pick his shots more. And he actually likes to counter punch on the front foot. So what he'll do is he'll move up close to you. He'll ap- apply pressure with his feet. And he'll attempt to make you anxious. And make you nervous to the point where you try and throw punches to keep him off. And at that moment that you throw punches, Ruiz is going to try and slip your shots and come back with very fast counters. That's how Ruiz fights. He's a front foot counter puncher, applies pressure, but picks his shots and picks his opportunities very well. And that's what Andy Ruiz needs to do against AJ. Obviously, look out for AJ's low left hand that we saw against Povetkin. If AJ drops that, Ruiz needs to, you know, creep inside and hit him over the top with a right hand, you know, follow up with the combinations. Also, Ruiz might want to invest in some body work when he can. You need to be careful going to the body because AJ's got the good uppercut and hooks and all kinds of stuff. So be careful going to the body, even a straight right hand. He needs to be sure that he's close enough and not throw the body shots from too far out. You see, one of the differences between Povetkin and Ruiz, right? They're both pressure fighters. Povetkin's got faster feet than Ruiz, doesn't have faster hands. But also, Povetkin throws his punches shorter than Ruiz does. So Povetkin's hooks have less of an arc on them than Ruiz's shots. Ruiz tends to arc his punches a lot wider. And does that negate his speed? Because we know Povetkin gave AJ plenty of problems early in the fight, coming forward and counter-punching on the front foot, bloody in AJ's nose and rocking him. Um, But his shots are very short. You know, short shots like that with a very um, tight arc are difficult to see. Whereas Ruiz, even though he's quicker handed than Povetkin, the shots have a wider arc. So maybe it will negate um, any advantage he might have in actual speed. Well, you know, it remains to be seen. But um, he should try and tighten the punches up a bit. I know it's maybe a little unrealistic when he's been throwing wide arcing shots for so long in his career. But if he can concentrate on tightening up his hooks, uh, particularly when he's at mid-range. When he's at close range, it's not going to matter so much uh, because he's going to be able to get shots off easier than AJ at close range for the most part, at least when they're fresh. So yeah, tighten up your hooks a little bit. Look for the low left hand from AJ and invest in the body. If AJ is going to be moving a lot, Ruiz needs to be going to that body to take the movement away, but just be careful you know, when, when going to the way. See, this is why in boxing you have a feeling out process where fighters will have a look at each other for a round or two and kind of, 
you know, feel out the lay of the land. See what happens when you faint at your opponent this way. See what happens when you throw a shot to this particular um, area of their body and see how they react. So you, you're feeling them out and you're assessing the situation. I'm expecting Andy Ruiz to probably, well, I'm expecting both of the guys to do that. If anybody's going to start fast, I would imagine it'll probably be Ruiz because again, it's a case of assessing the situation on the night. They might look at AJ and think, you know what? He's in a new environment. He's in a different country in a different time zone in front of a different commission. There's a lot of pressure on him because of what Wilder did the other weekend against Brazil. Let's try and test him early. Let's jump on him early. Maybe he's not ready for an early attack. So if anyone starts fast early, I'm thinking it's going to be Ruiz. Um, you know, the fight might end in the first couple rounds, potentially, if somebody lands the right shot. And if it's AJ winning the fight early, I I would suspect it will probably be AJ landing some kind of counter where Ruiz gets a little too overambitious. AJ lands a big counter, hurts him, puts some shots together, drops him, or the fight gets stopped with, you know, uh, Ruiz unable to continue on his feet. Something like that. That's if it ends early. I'm not saying it will. Um... So yeah, for Andy Ruiz, just do what he does best. Come forward, pressure AJ into throwing some maybe panic punches and encounter him. Look for the low left hand, invest in the body, uh, try and keep a tighter guard than normal because Andy Ruiz doesn't have a terrible defense, but he doesn't have a great defense either. He's relatively easy to hit. Yeah, in fact, there were some fights where he did have a terrible defense, but against Joseph Parker and a few others recently, his defense hasn't been terrible. But he's definitely going to need to tighten it up in this fight if he wants to win because AJ definitely hits harder than anybody Andy Ruiz has fought so far as a professional. So tighten up that defense um, and just do what he normally does. You know, invest in the body. Don't get too excited too early unless you land something big, you know. Don't get too excited too early because there might be a chance for Ruiz to take AJ out late. Yeah, if he strategizes the right way and his defense is tight enough and he invests in the body early you never know maybe the big man will tire his he'll be stationary enough late in the fight and Ruiz can let those fast hands fly and make some magic happen we'll see but yeah those are the keys to victory for the Anthony Joshua Andy Ruiz fight um hopefully it'll be a good one I think both guys have got a lot of heart both guys like to exchange, by the way. AJ is a guy with height and reach, but at heart, he's a warrior. You know, he's not like a Klitschko who's at heart safety first. No, AJ is not safety first at heart. AJ is a guy who likes to exchange, which is why he fought in a counterintuitive way in the early part of the Povetkin fight. He was standing right in front of Povetkin. He wasn't moving around and, you know, sticking a jab. He wasn't grabbing Povetkin constantly the way that Klitschko did when he fought Povetkin. I mean, that was one of the ugliest fights I've ever seen. The way Klitschko was just constantly grabbing Povetkin. Anytime Povetkin got remotely close, grab, lean on him, grab, lean on him, throw him around, lean on him. That's all uh, Klitschko was doing. AJ didn't fight like that. AJ hardly ever grabbed uh, Povetkin. He stood right in front of him. There wasn't that much movement in the first portion of the fight. So he fought in a counter counterintuitive way because AJ likes to scrap. He likes to get in there and hit you with big shots, you know, block your shots and come back with his own. Um, I would try and avoid, as I say, particularly early on, if I was AJ, exchanging with Ruiz, because Ruiz definitely has the faster hands than AJ. His hands are much faster than AJ's. So even though AJ might have the bigger power, don't give the shorter man opportunities he don't need. And as far as Ruiz, if AJ is moving, Ruiz should gold him. Yeah, if AJ's moving around, Ruiz should try and get the crowd on his side and get them to turn against AJ if he can and boo him and, and all that kind of stuff to put pressure on AJ to actually exchange. Yeah. So those are my keys to victory. Drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me know how you feel about this fight and what you think both guys need to do to have success. All right. Drop it all below. It's happening. I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q and A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. 
You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.